Once again, fellow Pia France lovers of freedom, men and women of goodwill, conscious people, wherever you are all over the world, we say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and to some of you, good night, depending on your time zone. This is Radio Biafra Extra for the avoidance of doubt. And we are streaming live through Radio Biafra London, being anchored by the deputy leader of the indigenous people of Biafra. Mazi Uchi Ukafo Mefo. He is from Abatiti, Abatiti is in Anambra State. And Anambra State is Biafra land. He's the man who have assured us that he will not allow the heart of this project to see corruption. And one day we will understand the mindset behind those words. Mazuchu Kafomefo is standing on a deputizing capacity on behalf of our Supreme Leader Mazen and Yoku Kano, the Prince of Afari Beku, heir to the throne of Ibeku Kingdom, the one and only man who stood up to speak for the collective interests of the Biafran people. We will keep on saying this truth until you get used to it. He is from Afari Beku. Afari Beku is in Omwahia. Omwahia is in Abia State, and of course, Abia State is Biafra land. And by the special grace of Chuku Kikabi, I remain George Unibi. I am from Abo. Abo is in Delta State, and Delta State is uh, Biafra land. Without wasting much of our time, we will acknowledge the creator, Chuku Kikabiyama, the one who sits in heaven and preside over the affair of man, because in the end, he is our hope and stay, our wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, our guide, the matter, both great and small, and so I will humbly say to him tonight, as always, Jehovah, Ebu di Kenaya, Ebu di Panume, Idi Ebu Bezim, Aha gi nekebu simiri na tu pwa jomo one me kam bidi dau. Of course, once again, I welcome you to this segment. The team remain back to your root. Back to your root. You see, we are fighting one war in different phase, and this is some of the things most of you will not understand. It is a privilege and a real one to be a Biafra. But it takes so much for you to remain a Biafra. Believe me. We are fighting one war, but in different phases. The war is simply a war to exercise our God-given right. A war to enable us to live as a human being. A war that will make the Britain and other criminals to steal our resources, but allow us to decide how we sleep, what we eat, how we dress, and the rest of it. 
it comes in different form and shape. A lot of friends parading themselves, but they are worse than the open enemy, believe me. But of course, we shall visit all of them. The most important thing is for our people to understand that this war is not about AK-47. Of course, at the right time, we shall bear arm, if that is what it will take to stop this evil and cliff called Nigeria. But of course, we are advocating for peace. We want Biafra to be restored without a shot of a bullet. I think the world will take the credit for it because except men and women of principle understand the need why indigenous nations within the African continent must be liberated from the concussion of Berlin Conference and then to be able to conquer. You must understand the nature of the enemy you battle. And it is going to be unfortunate for any Biafran who do not understand that most of our enemy are in these guys. They look like brothers. They look like sisters. They sound very polite. You see them and you, you will just give them all the best. You applaud them. But in the interim, unbelievable, according to Mazime 4. But of course, we must not lose focus. They're fighting us economically. They're fighting us spiritually, religiously. They're fighting us systematically, meticulously. They are fighting us any way imaginable and possible for them. I tell you, we will need all the help we can. But the only trusted helper we know this moment is Chukuki Kabiyama. And so when I say back to your root, we must understand who our ancestors are. This war we have fought for about 60 years. We've lost over 10 million of our people, the numbers still counting. Our fathers have been standing and waging this war for time immemorial. We can't come out and talk about how they were captured. They actually paved in. They allowed their weak side of them to prevail. Their compassion, their mercy, the, 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 the ability to be patriotic. They were kind. Hospital able people, I must tell you. And then they were trapped. They have fought this war as far as we can remember. Over 400 years or more than they have been fighting to stop terrorists from invading their land. From generation to generation, they actually invented method and pattern to defend our land. They did it even to the very dying moment of their life. And today we are here. But of course, we are fighting more sophisticated enemy than you can imagine. But we do not have any intention to retreat, not to surrender. If we must understand how they survive, we must go back to our route. We talk about Ekumeku every day. But how many people are willing to find out who this Ekumeku is? It will amaze you. It will amaze you why you have so many kind of Igbo in Delta State. It will amaze you. That today you have room of Domania people. It will amaze you who they are. But that is a study for another day. And so when certain people tell me certain things and I look at them, of course I do not have the right to say certain things I would have said. Because without our leader, Mazen and the Kano, we are all gone as a people because they have bamboozled us. And now to understand what these Aruchuku warriors did, for us to understand what the Abagana set or did, the Z people, for us to understand what they did, how they did what they did, we must understand who they are. And of course, our team remain back to your root. Believe me, it is not easy for Britain to conquer Biafra land. No European nation can single-handedly match a community in Biafra land. This is not boasting, but this is the truth. They always conspire. When we talk about Britain, Britain, and we talk about other colonial terrorists, none of them can single-handedly match a state in Biafra land as they have divided us. It is not possible for them, I tell you the truth, and we do not lie. But they know how to conspire. If we move emotion now as a people against Britain, America is going to support them. China is going to support them. India is going to support them. Not because they know or believe that Britain is doing the right thing, but there is always interest to protect the most still oil in Biafra land, unpaid for, unaccounted for. 
And this is the war our enemies, or rather our ancestors, has been fighting for as long as we can remember. But then, let's try to understand how they survive. We are here today. The best thing we can do for our children, for the next generation of Biafra, it's not the motto we give to them. It's not the house we build for them. It's not the international passport you give to them. Some of us boast and say, my children have so many passports. The Italian passport, the Jamaican passport, Indonesia. But this is not the best you can give to them. You must give them a time and space that will give them a sense of belonging. For in the end, without our land, the land of Biafra, who the hell do you think we are? We are nobody. Some people feel proud. You know, we are, we are doing it here. We are fighting for freedom. I tell you everything we have done here today. If Biafra is not restored, I tell you we live born in vain. But if for any reason, para adventure Biafra will not be restored in our time, we will make sure that the next generation of Biafra will be more fierce than anybody can imagine. For this is our duty. With our whole life, we will make sure they are ready. They can take our data. They can conspire against us. But we will study their strength. And with the weakness of our ancestors, we shall bring them together. And we will stand till the last man standing. Of course, before we begin to talk about the last man standing, you should know the position we will all be in. Friends and enemy alike. Back to your root. It doesn't matter how evil this seems to be. Understand when I say back to your root. I'm not trying to tell you that our ancestors were 100% perfect. Certainly not. They will not be human to be 100% perfect. But I'm saying that if they are evil, we must appreciate them for being evil. Don't you know British people worship the Rizame family? When you see a British man telling, telling saying good about people like uh, David Cameron, Rola Lady Dan, Margaret Tata, Peter Buota, and the rest criminal. When you see them talking about good of them, you think they are human beings. But of course, it is their, 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 their position to do that. And if Britain can praise people like Theresa May, if Britain can acknowledge people like Harrison, Harold Wilson, Freddie Lugard, Marforsen, and the rest of them, why wouldn't I be proud of my ancestors? If somebody could live all the way from America and come to my land and kidnap my people, and today they have the moral right to fight Boko Haram, Fulani Hetman and Miati Allah, and yet they take them and use them for forced labor, and some days later, and, and, and then they are, they are very good people. All of a sudden they will be taking us to heaven. Why wouldn't I be a proud of my ancestors? Don't forget this is the land of our birth. This is the land of our birth. We must know the truth about everything concerning us as a people because without that we are gone as a people but we will never allow that to happen this is the land of our bet for your information this is the land of our bet our people must understand this truth our people must understand this truth there is something our brother he saw and he sang his song. Or oh, is it not why we are here? Is it not because of the land of Biafra? Is there any reason why we are here? This is the land of our bet. I'll be back in a minute.
Yes, Biafra is the land of our birth. As Biafrans, I will, will not apologize. But of course, we must continue, like I was saying. On this segment, we must go back to our route. But like we have been going through some series for some days now, about three days or more. And our team has been, this period, our team is spiritual aspect of our culture that has been neglected. We've gone ahead to look at the star of David. We've gone ahead to look at the issue regarding astrology, even though we are not going in depth. But let's start from somewhere. Tonight, by the grace of Chuku Kikabiyama, we shall look at the third aspect of it, the art of defilement. You know, there are a lot of spiritual aspects of our life as a people that we neglect. We just look at, you know, everything about our ancestors is evil, and then we neglect them. But believe me, our enemies took advantage of this aspect of our spiritual life that have been neglected by us to undo us as a people. And so by the grace of Chuku Kikabiyama, our topic tonight is the art of defilement. The art of defilement. A-C-T-S, the arts of defilement. And then when you look at the issue of defilement, defilement is when something is defiled. When they say something is defiled, it means you make that thing dirty. And when that thing is dirty, it loses its purity. And when that thing is or has lost its purity, it is often used in a religious context. Now, let, let me try to break the grammar down. When they say something is defiled, that means it is dirty. When they say something is dirty, that means it has lost its purity. And when something loses its purity, the divine being cannot assess them. And now one truth remains that the Bible says only the foolish people say that there is no God. A fool will say in his heart that there is no God. But yet the foolish one will say in their heart that as a black man, that a Yubo man is your God. Well, may God have mercy upon you. Having said that, my God is Chuko Kikabiyama. Chuko Kikabiyama is from our boys, from Urugudu, Adia Mama. But if it's not from Urugudu, if it's not from Biafra land, and then certainly we will question his position as our God. I will not blame a Saudi Arabia man who has his own creator as a Muhammad or Allah. He's from their village. And when the Chinese worship their ancestors, when the Buddhists worship the Indian woman and the rest of them, when Europe worship Jesus Christ, Oyiboma, it's their God, is from their village. But it's, it's very difficult for you to understand this, that for God to save a black man, he must come as a black man. We won't apologize. But we keep quiet about all these things and they are undermining our spiritual position, believe me. But you won't go back there. Now Britain is shouting, oh, we're going to re return the brass cock that we steal from Benin. We're going to restore the, 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 the head of Festac. I don't know why I usually forget the name of this image. Britain now want to return all the artifacts stolen from your Sheran, they call it for. Of course, everything that has been stolen from our land, it will make your land uninhabitable. You must return them. And then the moment you are defied, you are spiritually disconnected. And any human being walking this face of the planet Earth that is spiritually disconnected is a living cop. One of the things I learned as a Christian, a very hard truth, is that I don't need to be spiritual. You know, some of us, when we go to church, we speak in tongue, we are in the spirit. My brother, China I wrote something online. He said, Goya and olive oil was actually meant to cook. But in Nigeria, I become anointing oil. What if he says, oh, yeah, it's Antichrist, it's Antichrist. But I won't insult you. If not, I would have said idiots. But let's continue so we don't lose focus because our times is uh, fast spent already. We go back to our ancestors. Once you are disconnected spiritually, you are gone. I don't need to be a spirit. I don't need to be spiritual because I'm a spirit being already. George only believes inside his body. This body is not me. He helps me. And Jesus said, there is no way the house will have more glory than the person that built it. Your house can be very beautiful. They don't give the glory to your building. They give the glory to your house. 
And when you build beautiful house, and somebody will come out and say, oh, look at this house. Very beautiful. Oh, what do you, the, the, the owner of this house? Oh, what do you, you are the one they give the glory, not the house. The same way, your spirit man is the one that takes the glory. He's the one that receives the praise. He's the one that receives the blessing and favor from God. Not your body. But of course, I believe you will understand before the end of this topic. And so the moment you are connected, disconnected spiritually, you are gone. After all, as a black man, you have spirit, body, and soul. Which means that more than 75% of your makeup as human being are spirit. Only your body is the physical. You need to be connected spiritually. And the moment you are disconnected spiritually, you are gone. If they don't kill you in the spirit, they can't kill you physically. Let me tell you something. Let me digress a little bit before we continue. It should be around 2011. And I was in a dream. And I have the same dream over and over and over. Three, almost three days, I was having the same dream. They were chasing me. I don't know who they are. But they will chase me to the extent that they will almost cast up with me. I will wake up. I say, thank God it's a dream. I go and hustle as usual. And then I come back the next night, second night. I sleep from where I ended the previous dream. Another one continue. And they chase me and chase me. They almost caught me. I woke up. I say, ah, God, the dream continued. On the third day, I went to the bed. I dreamt the same dream. But on the third day, they shot me on my stomach. Because there were so many. They were with pump passion. On the third day, the same dream, I was shot on the stomach. And I woke up in the morning. And I told my wife and I said, I have been shot. I was shot in a dream. This is bad. You know, they will tell you now that it's superstitious belief. But I did pray. I went out to work as usual. And that very day at about 10 a.m. in the morning, I start having, because they shot me in my stomach, exactly opposite my navel. And so around 10 a.m. that very morning, I start having inching in my navel. And I start scratching the... The, the position, the point. The more I scratch it, the more bombs grow from my within my navels. But I, I was able to recall that I was shot in the dream. And exactly the same location I was shot in the dream was the area that was inching me. And the more I scratch it, the more bombs grew from those regions. I have to close from work. And I went home. And my wife, being a midwife, I showed her. She examined me and said, according to medical report, this is allergic reaction. And if it's allergic reaction, and I said to her, what drug do I take? He said, no, you cannot take any drug because your body is reacting to certain chemical. You will never know if the drug you're going to take contain the same chemical your body is reacting to. So you take no drug. And that was when I knew that if spiritual implication was not applied to what is going on, if God has not intervened, I would have gone and buy paracetamol or turumacin, arabamacin, as the case may be, and drink them, and then I will die. And then they will say, oh, he took expired drug, everybody will analyze. But I've been killed in the spiritual realm. Something has to kill me physically to justify it. Most of us have had a counter where people die mysteriously. And those who have spiritual understanding, we say, then don't kill this person for village. Now here he's just supposed to die. But having said so, all these things cannot happen except you have been defied. So do not deny the fact about the spiritual existence among us. Our technology before civilization was known as witchcraft. Today, the technology, is the, the, the advancement of the modern world is known as technological advancement. But can you tell me the difference between witchcraft and technology? They are the same product in different containers. Make no mistake about that. When you take remote, 
made out of sand and plastic and you press a button and something begins to control something. There is spiritual influence there. Don't let anybody deceive you. But it's your evil own. So you call it technology. If it is black man own, you call it witchcraft in order to justify the demonization of our culture as a people. Can somebody tell me what makes matter fly in the air? Except there is a spiritual influence that is propelling or revolting around that matter. Can somebody tell me why the iron will float in the water? Except there are spiritual implications that have been activated. Don't let anybody deceive you. Because these things are minor to you. You, you zero your mind against them. You don't want to think outside the box. You accept it that way. But let me tell you how it works. This is December. Most of you, your Yoruba pastor will tell you that your mother-in-law, your grandmother, or the eldest man in your village is the one killing you. That for you to prosper, you are going to bring the sand in your community. Many of you, as you are coming this December, you will pack the sand in your father's village. You go and give it to your pastor. But let me remind you that you are idiot. Some of you, they send you to go to your community water and pack water. You are listening to me now. Yoruba pastor have told you, go to the river in your community. Fetch it when you are returning home. Bring it. Let me make you a rich man. But I tell you, you are bushmeat. Anytime you are doing this, I can assure you that you are part of the people initiating the art of defilement. Have you ever wondered why Chinese people will come to Nigeria in Biafra land here and they begin to nail something on the ground? I have seen Chinese company, China company, Japan company. Everywhere in Biafra land, they are nailing. Only God knows what they are nailing. Why is it that one of the biggest investments of the Chinese people in Africa is in the middle of Africa? Go and find out the center of all the country in Africa. It is the Japanese people that planted the heart in the heart of Africa. You don't know what is coming for you. We are talking about Britain and France. Let's pray Chinese and Japanese don't have access as Britain and France have. Africans don't know what is coming for them. We shall come to that later. Have you wondered why Yoruba people will send you text message, recharge card, and ask you to return it to them, and then begin to pray for you to be millionaire? But yet they are poor. Do you understand how it works? Those of you, they are sending text message. Oh, brother, I send you recharge card. Uh, please, it's a mistake. I was sending it to Baba. Baba is in Olumo, sure. Please, send it back, please. You now send it back as a good man, be a friend person that you are. And when you send it back to Baba, Baba will say, come, let me bless you, my son. I'm going to make you to be rich. But if you are reasonable enough, you will ask yourself, this Baba that want to make you rich, is it 2,000 Naira or 1,500 Naira empty and card his children are sending to him? I tell you before my mother passed away, I made sure that on monthly basis, I sent to her according to my level, nothing less than 42,000 Naira every month. For over 12 years till she died. But I'm a poor man, honestly. If I can do that for my mother, do you think I'll be sending my mother a recharge card 1005? Am I insulting her? Of course, according to level anyway. But the point now is that the person now that is sending 1000 recharge 5 cards to the father should be a poor man. He should be a poor man. Because if you are doing well, believe me, you won't be sending those things for your mother. You will recharge their phone. You make sure they are okay. 1,005 recharge card. Are they going to, what are they going to use it for? But let's assume you are poor. You have to do that for them. And then these same poor people who, who get back to poor son now will now call you as Yoruba and say, my son, I want to bless you. My daughter, I want to bless you. Anybody did there? He said, no, nobody did there. He goes, I will make you rich. Or oh, yeah, go and bring water. They initiate you and defile you. A thing too savvy make people poor. Why not make him picking rich? So that they go take and go for uh, London and renew in life then as they renew Buhari own. Don't you see Buhari? It's just like the same way. You cannot understand. Why is it Theresa May is aging every day? But Buhari went to visit Theresa May. All of a sudden, he turned to young boy Lambato. But of course, I will not digress for that. So you will understand why we must go back to our route. And now talking about defilement, the moment they defile you, 
they have automatically disconnected you from the spiritual realm. Our leader never came on this platform to tell us it's physical. He said, Chukwo Kikabiyama sent me. And if there is anything we believe more on this platform, it is Chukwo Kikabiyama. Don't you get it? This is spiritual. Or do you know where Chukwo Kikabiyama lives? Do you have the picture of Chukwo Kikabiyama? But of course he lives within us. We know he's there. We feel his presence every day. For everything he has created, testify about him. And so we don't need this picture. But let us continue about the issue of defilement. Now, if we go back, this word defilement is constantly used in the Christian religion. According to the Christian religion, 30 verses in the Bible talk about defilement. 30 verses in the Bible talked about the issue of defilement. One of the most discussed issue in the bible and now it will amuse you to understand that seven thousand three hundred and forty eight form of defilement the bible record seven thousand three hundred and forty eight different type of defilement that is to tell you how serious this matter is but now let us begin to come back home a little bit. In Matthew chapter 15, verses 11 and 18, Jesus said, It is not what you encounter, according to the Bible, that defies you, but what comes out from your mouth. It is not what you touch every day that defies you, but what comes out from your mouth. That is how it was ended in the New Testament. And now, anything we touch does not defile us. But what we say defile us. I want you to hold on to that. Then when you go, continue from there, and you go to Matthew chapter 15, verse 20, there seems to be a form of contradiction, or rather Corinthians and the rest of them. Apostle Paul in the Corinth said, for what truly defies you, or rather Peter said, you know, there was a time Peter was in Jerusalem. He was playing hypocrisy. When he saw the Jewish believer, he disassociated from the Gentile believer. And when Paul saw Peter's level of hypocrisy, he confronted him before the council in Jerusalem and said to Peter, why is it that when you see the brethren from Jerusalem, you start avoiding the brethren from the Gentile? Are you telling us now that there is difference between the Gentiles and the Jewish Christian? Paul couldn't actually contradict. I mean, Peter could not actually defend himself. But rather, they softened the word of God to enable them to have a safe passage that will enable them to deceive me and you. And then they said, according to them, they said that uncircumcision defies you. If you do not wash your hand before you eat food, defies you. And now, if we go what the disciple of Jesus said, precisely Paul and Peter, the pillar of the Christianity, Peter is the one that is chosen as the head of the church. When Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church. He had a mantle. But then Paul was chosen also as apostle to the Gentile but was more used by God, even more than Peter. Let's go this way so you will understand. And so in the presence of these two people, they contradicted the prediction of Jesus. Or they complicated it rather. Because Jesus has earlier taught them that it is what comes from your heart that defies you. But they went on in Jerusalem, in the castle in Jerusalem, to tell them that if you are not circumcised, if you don't wash your hand before you eat food, that they defile you. Now, I wouldn't want us to begin to rally around this scripture, but I want to throw more light so you understand the art of defilement. And then when you see any of them around you, you will be able to understand how they function. Having said that, we go back to the way they defile people. Or rather, let us find out the things that must be defiled. As a Christian, I have been very careful monitoring certain things. And that is the prophecy of Daniel. 
And then Jesus reaffirmed it. He said, when you see the abomination of dissolution spoken by the prophet Daniel standing in the holy place, those who are still reading the Bible should be very careful because the church will be defied. We cannot truly say if the church has been completely defied at this moment that we are talking. But let us go back to the things that can be defied. And then I will show you one or two things that will amaze you. Number one thing that can be defied is one, woman can be defied. When you rape a woman, you defy that woman. There is a consequence to the family that rape a woman. That is why Buhari can never have peace, even in his grief, because Buhari raped his wife, Aisha. That is why the Muslims, without any apology, must continue to fight themselves anywhere they see themselves in the world. But these are the five men that until they get rid of it, they cannot solve their problem. In Saudi Arabia, Muslim is fighting Muslim. In America, Muslim is fighting America. In Japan, Muslim is fighting Japan. In India, Muslim is fighting India. In Nigeria, Muslim is fighting Nigeria. In London, Muslim is fighting London. In Malaysia, Muslim is anywhere Muslim go to. Muslim must fight somebody. If there is nobody to fight somebody, they will fight somebody. Why? Because they are raping little, little children. This is defilement of the woman. And the day you lose your power by sleeping with a woman under menstruation, you defile yourself. Now, let me tell you the truth. If you have made this mistake, ask God to forgive you. Nobody who sleeps with another people's wife that die normal, except to repent. These are defilement too. Nobody, nobody, nobody that will sleep with another man's wife when that man is alive that will die normal. This is how the Bible represented it. He said, can a man put fire in his bosom and not be born? So is he who move on to another man's bosom. He will burn you. You will die miserably. All of you now, most of you in the diaspora, we know what you do. Your, your friend will go and carry cooking or misbehave. They will lock him in the prison. For you to help his wife, you will be sleeping with his wife while he's in the prison. You think you are a smart guy. You will die for nothing. Poison will kill you. Watch people who sleep with another man's wife. When that man is alive, this is how they die. They die by poisoning. They die by straight bullet. Majority of them die by motor accident. Honestly, I have been poisoned three times or four times in my life. All because of this Biafra issue. I survive all of them because my hands are clean. And if I have made mistake. I could only go to the creator, ask for forgiveness and repent because the greatest misery that will befall you is to defile yourself. Your pastors don't tell you this thing because they are doing it. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. After service, choir master, yes, evangelist, or Satyana. But these are out of defilement. That is why full and he men we kill a pastor and a reverend and walk away with it. This is an art of defilement when it comes to the woman. Do not defile your women. Our women were spiritually strong. Majority of our women that were adopted as slaves, they used to bind their mouth. Because when they pray, it happens. And somebody said that they are God first born. I mean, last born. So they used to bind their mouth. Go and ask the slave masters. And so what they did was to be raping them. That is why they rape our women, to defy them. We're full and enter any community. They rape your women and desecrate the land. They defy them. Those people, their prick is supposed to be cut out and bought off. Let man and women die and let our land remain holy and sacred. These are out of defilement. But of course, we must continue. Man can be defied. Do you know what defies a man? And I want you to go back to your Bible. Because this is the closest information you have that you will believe blindly. But I want you to understand. And God said, the children of Israel should not eat certain fish. Any fish that don't have a skin, don't eat it. Don't eat pig. Then don't eat what again? Catfish and snail and so many of them. But let me tell you, I want you to go back and study your Bible in the Old Testament. Find out all the animals that God said you should not eat. I want you to go and find out, you will see that all these animals are the ones that have been developed genetically. Every animal that God said to Moses, you people, children of Israel must not eat. They are the only animal that can be developed genetically. 
We are in trouble, but we don't know. Catfish was one of them because it doesn't have skin. Do you know that you can breed catfish one million in a day? But the real fish that have scale, you cannot be developed genetically. Something is wrong somewhere. And each time you eat all these things, you defile yourself. Don't you know there were specific animals that was required from God for offering sacrifice? You don't use goats to offer sacrifice that God will accept according to the Bible. You use ram. Men defy themselves in many ways. But let's stop there. Objects can be defied. In fact, according to the religion of the Jewish in the Bible, if you wear any cloth with two different material, it's a defilement. There are certain paints you paint with your house. It defies your house. And when they say something is holy, it's not as if the thing is sinless. It simply means that that thing has been set aside for the service of God. That is holy. It doesn't mean you are righteous. And once any object is dedicated and called holy unto the Lord, it could not be used for any other purpose other than the purpose to serve God. And the moment you use it for another thing, it is defined. For instance, IPOB have a, a, a lay down rule. Number one, we say it's on Urube one year, but also the day we betray that, we defile ourselves by ourselves. We say we are whiter than white. Any day you are turning from whiter than white, you are defiling yourself first of all before this holy platform. But Chine Kamaku here, Joe, God will not allow you people. That's the way you say, oh, and Urube one year, but also we are whiter than white. Make sure you are living by those things. You will defile yourself first of all. But of course, there will be always men and good women who will make sure your defilement will end with you. And that is why I say one day people will understand the implication behind the words of Mazime 4. He said, I will not allow the heart of this project to see corruption. And then we look at our land. Our land can be defiled, like I said. I want those of you to look at the people who handle the contract of digging gutter or anything digging in Biafra land. I want you to watch out their full any people. Do you know what they are burying in our land? Do you know that the symbol of the Biafra nation is buried somewhere in Plateau State or Kanu State, if I'm not mistaken? But don't worry. They defy land. If Chuko Kikabiyama has not sanctified our land, we are gone as a people. They defy sea. In those days, there are many rivers in my place. They have rules and law. I wonder if they exist any longer. Because our river has been desecrated, our land has been defied, our forests have been desecrated, everything about us. The moment you break any of this door, the moment you break any of this door, spiritually, our house is left vulnerable. The enemy will come in and they will overrun us. But believe me, that will not happen. Because Chuko Kikabiyama will not allow that to happen. I will be back in a minute.
we must continue from there out of defilement we must not allow these people to come and defile our land they know what they are doing they know what they are doing you may not see the implication the everything they are doing every junction in biafra land you will see full and yawosa positioning their wheelbarrow you think they are selling market but of course we must make our land clean first of all you are biafra anywhere you are in the world you are here to join ipob Send your name, your phone number, your location to our WhatsApp line. You are a musician as a Biafran. You have sang song. You are a producer. Send your name, your location, and your WhatsApp line to our WhatsApp line here on Radio Biafra Israel. Because the journey has already begun. And that WhatsApp line is open at this moment. It is 070-815-45642. 070-815-45642. Four five six four two, and anybody calling that WhatsApp line on video, you are calling me on video. If I talk to you, you will have typhoid fever. But don't be that stupid to be calling this line on video, because you try it again, I will pick it and I will tell you how stupid you can be. Don't try that nonsense. Our WhatsApp line once again is zero seven zero eight one five four five six four two. Special number for the female is zero eight one two eight eight five eight six one four. 081-288-58614. Special number, or rather that is the special number for the female. A direct line is 081-221-529-71. 081-221-529-71. Caller on the line, can you hear me? Yes, good evening from here. Your name and where are you calling from? Your name and where are you calling from? Yes, a caller on the line. Your name and where are you calling from? Yes, yes, I am John Ibe from Ibe. Go ahead, please, my brother. Yes, I've been hearing of this hour, of this our struggle. Your preaching all the time. May Chukwu Kigabiama bless you, bless your family, bless Uche uh, Mepo, bless Kalunande uh, Kalu, bless all of you, all IPOB strong members. May God bless you. Thank you very much, and God be with you. Our people must understand. Don't let them defile you. If they can't defile us, they can't conquer us. Are you there, caller on the line? Caller on the line. If you can hear me, stop listening to your radio. Yes, sir. Call on WhatsApp. Are you there? Call on WhatsApp. Hello? Call on WhatsApp. Uh, I'm just I'm I'm just on by name. Go ahead, please. Um I want to join IPOB. Then send me your name, your phone number, and your location on this WhatsApp. I will pick it up from there. 
Thank you. Okay, I'll, I'll do it now. I'll do it now. Thank you. We must continue. Are you there? Call on the line. Yeah, good evening. Good evening from here. Your name and where are you calling from? My brother. yourself a question why will fulani headsmen attack our grandmother in the farm as old as they are and still rape them they are defiling them ask yourself why is yoruba pastor asking you to bring sand and to bring water from your community and you are taking it for them what are they doing it with their friends wake up are you there call on whatsapp call on whatsapp what is that Good evening from here. Your name and where are you calling from? Yes, I'm here. My name is Emeka Ndizov. I'm calling from Joss. Go ahead, please, my brother. I will advise you to yes, stop sir. listening to your radio or I will cut you off. Because the delay you are seeing there is as a result of you listening to your radio. You want to hear yourself. It doesn't work that way anyway, but we must continue. When you call, focus on your phone. Caller on the line, your name, and where are you calling from? Go ahead, please. Well, I want to thank you for good work you are doing for us. But we are missing your message here in New for our insurance and education. I, I understand so and, question, and believe me. I have uh, online. I'm not going online. You need to share the information. This way, I just every day I just need my radio on ten hours. <laughs> yes, <laughs> don't worry. They are working on it. Oh, you God, I beg you, God, I beg God. You know what? They are working on it. This our engineer is so that we can do so very soon. Of course. 
for now that we have plans to hear it's important now <laughs> because uh, we I don't understand. know what is going on. I understand. <laughs> Thank you very much. It shall be restored soon, I can tell you that. Are you there, call on the line? Hello. Hello, my son. Good evening, go ahead. Good evening. Good evening. In the state, Jaffna Landi. Mazo Nido. I am make a lady in Kuku na Ezibote. Ezibote on Tichi, me in a teacher in Ojabalia. My name is Simon. This assignment, we are the woman in this Jaffna land. Almost of us. Almost of the woman of Jaffna land. I was a Flandis. Are you doing them? Even some our women go to their place because of money. I don't want to even go there because I will be too raw if I go there. Every morning, our people queue up there. We are not talking about the one that went to Segare in Kano and Kaduna. As I'm talking now, they are bringing that market to our doorstep. Go ahead. Let me not yes. go there. So they are going there. If, if you ask them, or if you what are you I want to collect. You collect what kind of a warning you expose you yourself to this year, how tough land is. So the thing, if it is you pay me, this city you are bringing, what is not only that one? You can see in the Bible that is it. Of course, that is how they behave. The zoo people. The truth hurts them. They continue hearing it. Are you there, Kola and Waza? Kola and Waza, are you there? Kola on the line, are you there? Kola on the line. Of course, we must continue. Kola on the line, your name and where are you calling from? Hold on, what's up? Good evening, sir. Good evening from here. Go ahead, please. My bless our leader, Mazinam the Kano, and our deputy, Uche Mefo, and our African rep, Mazi George Onyibe, and the other principal of IPOP servant that are serving us with honesty and uh, uh, faith that our kingdom, Biafra, must restore. We bless you, Kikabiyama, for selecting the 12 disciples that are very honestly to lead us to the promised land. May he keep them alive to see the promised land. In Chupo Kikabiyama's name we pray. He says, I have sent you my name and my information I'm living, in, my name is actually Kepol Odo. I'm from Obiango, Ngo Okbala, Imo State, in Biafra land. But uh, I live in Zoon, called Lagos, part of Zoon, Nigeria. I have sent you my information regarding my request that I want to job, join IPOB, the wonderful family. And I don't know the area I'm staying in, I'm living in Lagos. I have searched so many, I have asked. There's no place they are doing the meeting. There are so many are so family many. in Lagos. Resend me your data, I will still pick it up. Okay, okay, sir. I have resend it already. I live in Ikotu, uh -huh. in Alimosho area. I have resend it. All right, thank you very much, okay. my brother. We must continue. We have one target, and that is to ensure that Biafra is restored. Nothing more, nothing less. Are you there, caller on the line? Yes, I'm always here now. Man. Yes, award-winning man. Go ahead, please. Thank you for picking my call. Okay. You see, uh, your topic, this is your topic, back to roots, back to your roots, back to your roots. I please, I want to beg you, 
I know all these uh, teachings since last year are being recorded to be compiled in a book form. This particular topic of Back to Your Roots, please, I want you to make it a separate book of itself with so many volumes. You see, because this teaching is extraordinary. Among all your teachings, this Back to Your Roots has been so exceptional. Please, I will, have, I will request that when the books are being compiled, this particular part to your route will be a book of itself with so many volumes, volume one, volume two, volume three, even to volume 10, because it's even so simple, this back to your route something. So that's what I want to say. Then I want to comment on what you said yesterday. In the same back to your route, you said something about your own mother. Who told you uh, in 1956, there was what the white man today called eclipse. It is, your mother told you that uh, God has backed away from us. That is what you told us. The same story I was told by my grandmother when I grew up in around 1960 something or something like that, early 70s. But this thing happened in 1956 or 1957. My grandmother told me by then, he said my mother, my own mother was very young. She took her to the farm. Everybody was in the farm. All of a sudden, the weather started changing. They thought the rain was about to fall. And all of a sudden, it was a total darkness, what they never witnessed before. And they concluded that Chukwa Biyama, that was what she called us. She said, Chukwa Biyama is angry with the world. That is a sign that Chukwa Biyama is angry with the world. They are going to consult the oracle to appease Chukwa Biyama that such a thing will not happen again. And she told me that the, 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 the chief priest of those days told them that this thing will never happen again, even in their grandchildren's time. They will not witness it. That is our own time. We will not witness such a thing. And I think that believe such a thing has never happened, even during our own time, to see that what we, a white man called total eclipse. It never happened again. The white man called it eclipse, but our own people believe that he has offended Chuko Kikapiyama, and he, he showed us the sign of his anger. That was why he did that. So I really believe, look at your mother in Abo, and my own grandmother in Iberi, having a single belief that that's what the white man called eclipse, is actually the, the wrath of God on, on us because we offended him. And now these white men came, or Yoruba pastors will come to deceive us. Eh? So please, expansiate on that partic this particular thing, this thing that the white man called Eclipse, because it's a very heavy something you taught us. We never knew all these things. I don't know how God singled you out to be giving us this type of lecture. That is, no, no person has ever had this type of peer lecture. In the whole wide world, you are the only person bringing this type of le lecture. The, 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 the spirit of God is in you. That's what I will only say. <laughs> Thank you, sir. You have brought and to go from for me. Better. Thank you. You are award winning man. You, we must continue. Yes, sir. Are you there? Call on WhatsApp. Call on WhatsApp. Are you there? Of course, as always, we must continue. Call on WhatsApp. <laughs> are you there? Hello. Good evening, Master. Good evening. Go ahead, please. Yeah. Yeah. My name is Eze Francis Njoko. I'm I'm from um uh, maybe Amazon in Imo State in precisely in uh uh Abombise local government area of Imo State, Biafran land. But I'm calling you from Osisoma in Aba, Biafran land. Um, there is something I want to clear here. There is a, a point you made where a Yoruba man had to call an Igbo man after sending the charge card to him, you know, asking him to send it back to him. So I want to clear that that same thing really happened to my friend. He was with me and his wife when they credit came. We all confirmed it. It was 3,000 Naira, the charge card. 
and later the man called that uh, he's a so-so man from uh, Oshun State. That he's thanking him that he's a good man. Later, this man asked him to bring money. That Later, this man asked him, am I coming out here, sir? Go ahead, please. This man asked him to bring money. Okay. This man asked him to bring money, uh, 5000 for him to buy pigeon and some other things to work for him. Then, uh, um, camp, work camp for him because he, after asking him what he, the kind of work he does, and he told me he's a builder that is going to do a uh, charm for him that people will be calling him for work, you know. So this my brother and my friend told him that he's he's not interested. After he, he told his wife what the man said, his wife shouted to know this man is evil, so I sh you shouldn't go. So since that time I don't know I don't know if the man is still calling him. He calls him every day, every blessed day. So we went to the man's place in Abia State here, on Abia, precisely, to build a house for his brother. So on our way back to Mbise, in my place, there is a, a store we entered. Same thing happened to one of our brothers. Same thing was complaining that somebody sent him money through a recharge card, what, 3000 and the person has been calling him. You know, asking him the kind of job he, he's doing for him to do, you know, work term for him. Same thing. So we looked at each other and said, see, these people, uh, they are up to something else. So I want to clear it so that our brothers will, will know the kind of trouble we are into. And, you know, I know how to, you know, dodge them. Thank you very much. God will bless you for your good works. I've been listening to you all through thank you you are doing a good job and you are you are really bringing us back together we must, god will bless you we must continue our people must understand yes caller on the line your name and where you call from caller on the line yeah, good, evening, sir. good evening from here yeah good evening judge on good evening Marze. go ahead please yeah my brother god will bless you i took you and the director as my sister even though I'm um, 50 something years or 57, 58, I'm, I'm, I took you as my father because he teach me a lot of things. He made me to know a lot of things I didn't know in my life before. May God bless you and bless your family. Like this thing you are saying now, this thing touched me a lot about somebody to use another person's wife. This is what church bring for us in this country. All these core men of God, this is their job. Do you know that I wanted to protect myself so nobody can give me a poison or something of that nature? 